Hello all and welcome to this faculty forum relating to the quote unquote best practices in online instruction. John Chapo here, part of the online learning task force at Penn College. This is an initiative that's been resuscitated by Joanna Flynn in recent months in an effort to build on the cornerstones and yeoman's work that was done by folks such as Kelly Butzler and Walter Schultz some four or five years ago. And what we wanted to do here was provide faculty with not only the ability to have discussions, which can take place in the discussion section of Plato, part of this classroom as well, but also to share here some salient select ideas as it relates to the actual instruction of online learning. Now this isn't any comprehensive list and this is not meant to be prescriptive in any way. You're not being told you need to because every American doesn't like to hear the words you need to, <laughs> right? Rather, we share these for your reflection, for your consideration. Therefore, when you are going to do battle, so to speak, in the online learning world, when you're doing your instruction online, do keep some of these, if not all of these, in mind. Naturally, if you have questions, please pose them in the discussion section of Plato here. Otherwise, I'll work briefly through some of these so styled select salient best practices next. Before getting into those best practices, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment here to share one of the underpinning aspects of the design of this faculty forum. And it might be a hope, really, is that each of us as faculty members will consider ways that we might be able to reimagine how we go about doing our course content right now in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom and ask ourselves individually or maybe collectively, how might we be able to leverage technology, this is a college of technology, to perhaps do some of what we normally do in class and pivot that to an online component. Maybe we do some theory online, which frees us up then from a face-to-face -face standpoint to do more applied stuff. So I just throw that out here as perhaps a fire starter and something that we can all flesh out and discuss in the discussion section of Plato itself. You say, okay, come on, Chapo, time's ticking. What, what are these best practices? Well, we'll get to them right now. There's nine of them. I'm going to share them here. These aren't prescriptive. There's no you need to here. If anyone knows me, you say you need to to me. My first response is I don't need to do jack sh You know what I'm saying? This is not prescriptive. It's not. What we want you to do is take these into consideration when you're doing your design and most especially when you're actually in the classroom teaching. Before I move into the rapid fire round where I'm going to hammer out each of these bullet points to you, these salient best practices, I'm going to caveat that by saying we can discuss the why behind these in the discussion section. Okay, so tug down the safety straps. Here we go. Point one, faculty should be active, keyword active, in your e-classroom five out of seven days. One of those five should be a weekend day. So five out of seven, one weekend day. That's point one. Point two, grading. Grading should be completed within five days. Five days. Point three, an extension of point two, the gradebook. As we grade, the gradebook should be automatically updating. Therefore, students should have a visual at any time of where their grade is. This shouldn't be guesswork. Because if they know exactly where they are, they can take ownership, they can take responsibility, and they can course correct if they need to. Salient best practice number four, announcements. You should send out at least one announcement. Best practices say at the beginning of the week, the beginning of the week for me is Sunday. Yes, that's one of the five days one should be in the classroom and a weekend day. Point five, be redundant. I don't care if you have to say the same thing in six different places in the classroom. If you're conveying due dates, course expectations, whatever it might be, you have to provide this information in multiple areas within the classroom because we can't assume that everyone is going exactly to the place where we say they should go. Therefore, get accustomed to providing information, the same information in different places. That way as students navigate to different parts of the site to include favorite areas of the site for themselves, we are all creatures of habit, they are then more than likely getting the information that you're trying to convey. Best practice number six, record your content whenever and if possible. Put it online here. Make it available to them 
That way they can listen back if they need to. If there's disruptions in their connectivity, they can come back at a different time. Make it asynchronous rather than synchronous, if at all possible. Therefore, record as I'm trying to model right here. Point seven, faculty should answer emails within 24 to 36 hours. I know this might sound awful aggressive for some of you and maybe even chuckling and some four-letter expletives as it relates to that. But this is a best practice. Now, you could push it to 48 hours, but that's a lot aggressive. And what I mean by that is you're the only lifeline for these students. They're out there on an island. If they're confused, they don't understand a, a concept or some aspect of a, an assignment, you're the only source of information for them. Best practice number eight, options. Whenever we can provide students options, we should try to do so, especially as it relates to their ability to convey to us their ability to meet and or master a certain competency. So if there's more than one way to get to the destination, which is showing competency, then we should provide multiple avenues for students to be able to get there. And the last of these nine select best practices here has to deal with discussions. If you're going to use discussions in an online classroom, and you should, then faculty, we should be actively contributing to these discussions at least three different days during the week. So that's the nine. Hardly an exhaustive list, but a pretty solid set of salient best practices for us all to strive to meet and or exceed, especially on the delivery side of electronic learning. Yeah, we want to keep it top of mind for sure during the design, but most especially when we're delivering this. If you have specific questions about any of these individually or more collectively, maybe you have some others you want to add, please do so in the discussion section. I'd like you all to go there and consider contributing to the online discussions in the discussion section of Plato. With that said, I want to thank you all for your time and most especially your consideration of these best practices in your e-learning or Plato classroom. John Chapo signing out. Thanks again for tuning in and hope to see everybody contribute and or participate in the discussion portion of this faculty forum as well. Thanks again. See you all in the discussions.